Hey guys, uh, thank you so much for watching and welcome to our first show of Expanding Mind. Uh, I'm your host, Kitsy Higgins, and welcome to the first uh, pilot show of this uh, program series. Uh, today I am, uh, normally I will be having special guests. I will have various topics of alternative wellness, metaphysical, spiritual topics. And this first pilot one, I wanted to really just introduce myself, introduce who I am, and let you know um, about me so you can get to know me as your host. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the host or to the guests I will be having for the future videos. But for now, let's just get to know myself. Uh, I, I, I think it's important to talk about what's going on in people's lives because of uh, I think it's important to stay connected to people. It's important to stay up to date with people and to know what they're doing and to see what's, uh, you know, what's happening in their lives, uh, good or bad. Uh, also, I think it's important to connect with an audience and to connect with you. And the more you get to know me, the more you get to know about my life, you'll kind of either say yay or nay <laughs> to continuing watching more of these videos and shows. Uh, so... A little bit about myself, uh, I, as you see on the video, I am also, I, I'm a psychic medium and a coach. Uh, you can learn more about me at my website. Uh, you'll see uh, www.kitsyhickens.com. I'm also the organizer of Three Rivers Psychic Fair, which you'll see down below. Um, and it has a website telling you how to uh, get more information along with the date and location. So that's what I do. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. I organize the fairs and then I have my own business of coaching and psychic mediumship. What really lights me up is helping and teaching people about topics that have been a no-no um, or something that is uh, hasn't been talked a lot about and I understand not everyone's gonna agree with these views and not everyone's gonna agree with these beliefs or cultures, and that's okay. And I'm not asking you to believe what I believe in. It is more about uh, if you say, oh, I love crystals, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. And um, it goes with my beliefs and it goes with my, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it's in alignment with who I am then keep watching and learn about them. And, you know, if it's a special guest that's talking about crystals, you know, be open to what we're learning and what's being taught. So to me, it's really about um, teaching things that have been, you know, taboo for a while and just bringing it to a mainstream level so that people can make a judgment if it's right for them or not. And if it is right for them, that they learn more about these topics and learn more about these things. So uh, for me, I will talk more a little bit about myself and my beliefs later on in the show. But, um, and so I look forward to hearing from you uh, and you can always comment on Facebook um, and message my Facebook page to say, you know, what you connected with, what you um, learn new about from watching this show and uh, a takeaway or even something that, uh, you know, you might say, oh my God, I love these crystals, but I want to know, uh, could, you know, is there a way that you could do a more in-depth answering whatever question you might have also? So, um, so that's who I am and that's what I offer and that's what I organize. I originally started this, I actually created my own Expanding Mind series about um, six years ago. Uh, I might also include those videos uh, in the upcoming months on PCTV. Uh, they are already recorded. Um, so this idea of creating a show that will teach people about spiritual alternative wellness metaphysical topics has always been a passion of mine and it has always been uh, something that's really dear to my heart. So uh, I also am a mother of two kids. I'm a single mom of two kids. Um, I have two boys. Uh, the one is Riley. If you go to my Facebook page or my business page, you'll see my kids. 
Uh, my younger, my older one is turning 11 actually this week. So I'm doing a, a birthday celebration and uh, doing all that fun stuff. And then I have a younger child named Colin who's six years old. And I've lived in Pittsburgh off and on for about 20 years. Uh, I moved out to the New Ken area of the city uh, about, oh my, nine years ago. And then just recently came back two years ago. Um, I recently just did a post on Facebook about my love for Pittsburgh. So I truly have a love for this area. Um, the views of this area is outstanding. And um, I have lived here and really had a love for this city ever since I moved here and really um, planted roots here. So I myself am also a Pittsburgh um, resident and happy to have made this my home. So uh, I did also have a successful local business in Trenum. Um, and the Trenum, uh, it was, I had the local business for about six years. And it was um, about six years ago or five years ago that I moved my business online, just looking to help more people, help make a bigger impact and whatnot. Um, so going back to uh, this and uh, what I wanted to talk about now is that um, it's summer vacation. So what I'm up to is really just taking care of my kids, having fun, enjoying the sun. I don't know if you enjoy summer as your favorite season. To me, it's my favorite. So you'll probably see me at Kennywood Sandcastle <laughs> or the public pool. Um, so uh, that's what I love to do. And in the summer, that is my favorite thing to do. Um, I just had a psychic fair in Penn Hills uh, two weekends ago. Was it two weekends? If it wasn't two weekends, it was last weekend. Yeah, uh, two weekends ago. So I just had a, another fair recently. Um, 60 vendors, which is huge, which is really good. Um, so it's, it's one of the larger psychic fairs in the area. So I just accomplished that this summer. Um, also, I became a, a resident owning a house. Um, so I'm really excited to be uh, owning a house and again, creating those roots, creating permanent roots for my kids. So that was really important. So I've had some big changes this past <clears throat> four months, new house, um, the, that psychic fair, um, and just creating visions, creating my dreams of creating a show like this where it is on um, TV and really allowing it to be um, out in the mainstream. So I've had some pretty big things happen and um, while also just having fun, um, thinking of the things that... <coughs> thinking of uh, just the things that the kids and I can do uh, before the school year and before the, um, the end of the summer, which is just a few days away. So uh, I'm also wondering what you guys like to do over the summer. Is there, is there something specific you like to do, vacations? Uh, what is your favorite season? We'll be right back. Welcome back. And uh, this is a segment I wanted to really have a Ask Kitsy segment, uh, kind of like a Dear Abby, where we talk about uh, a question or two of someone that sends me a question and I answer it here. Um, on this pilot uh, show, I wanted to talk about a question that was recently sent to me. And what it said was, hey lady, I've been going through a lot of stuff I can't handle and I don't think the path I'm taking is a good one. I don't know, was just curious what it was all about. Uh, I am looking for a happy, dramatic, free lifestyle. I haven't been happy in a while, like truly happy, it's depressing. Uh, N, so my response to this would be, if uh, it's really about if you're unhappy with your life, or if you're noticing there's things that you could do better at or could kind of stop at, it would be 
about if you want a different life, you then need to ask, what would you like instead? It's about clarity. Um, it's important to get crystal clear about what you are desiring and what that life would look like. So what I would suggest is to write out four or five segments of your life examples. So uh, life, health, family, love, uh, love relationships, um, love or love relationships, work and money. You can get more specific with those segments, but that is the, the top uh, major ones. So write out each one, what would your ideal life look like or feel like? If you have a negative habit that you want to break and no longer want to have, then take the steps to break the habit. It is something you will have to do over and over again. If you want to have a better relationship with money, then learn the steps on how to save and keep your money. What's really extremely important, <clears throat> my water's on my floor, uh, is for you to feel into those feelings often. Oh, here it is. So my thing is, is that um, the subconscious is going to keep you where you're at now. So it's really important that you learn a way where you can bypass your subconscious. Bypassing that would be to feel into those feelings that you want now. So what I was hearing from the first, uh, from this writer, N, was that um, she feels depressed, uh, depressed, and unhappy. So the situation is, is that the subconscious is going to do its part to keep you feeling those feelings. That is comfortable for you. That is comfortable for um, what you are experiencing. So the best thing for you to do is to really get crystal clear on what you want and then also imagine those or write those down. Get into those feelings. Get into those images of what you want. And then once you do that, just feel those feelings as often as you can. And sometimes when I'm feeling those feelings, it's kind of like I'll, I'll say, oh, I'm feeling excited. And I'll feel excited even though it feels the same way as if I'm feeling joyful. But I'm still saying it. So I'll say I'm feeling joyful. I'm feeling excited. The feelings don't really feel different in that moment. But because I'm saying I'm feeling joyful, I'm feeling excited, I can feel the vibration. I can feel those emotions. Uh, I can, not the specific emotions, but I can feel a different vibration that's happening in my body by feeling those higher vibed or higher limit feeling feelings or emotions. So what I would really recommend is to get into a practice even daily or every other day of getting into those feelings of those desired life. So if you are unhappy, maybe just the first step is, is knowing what you want, thinking of the things, well, I wanna change my money habits, I want to have a relationship that fulfills me. I want it where they're trustworthy and honest and committed fully to me. Uh, you know, really tap into what would that feel like? It would feel joyful. It would feel um, safe. It would feel uh, maybe even grateful. You know, just feeling grateful of, of getting to have this opportunity. So feel into those feelings daily or as often as you can. And when you feel those, you will be able to start changing a little bit easier. You'll start, the subconscious will kind of embrace those little tiny changes that you're doing. What's also important though is that if you're feeling those feelings, great, but you still want to be making changes and, and kind of getting into alignment with that life. So you could be feeling those feelings and saying, nope, I'm just going to stay right where I'm at. I'm not going to move. I'm totally happy with where I'm at. Even if I want a different life, that's not going to work. And you're not going to get into alignment with what you're desiring. So 
the best thing for you to do would be to feel those feelings and then work towards switching beliefs, switching habits, switching just other things that you can to get into alignment with that relationship that you're looking for. Maybe join dating sites. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways on how you can essentially get into alignment with that life that you're desiring. Same thing with if you're saying, well, I'm unhappy with life. Uh, you know, if, if it's just the overall unhappiness, feel into those feelings of what you're desiring and then making changes. Maybe, you know, going out to a free concert. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if you're... I get it, people want a different life. They wanna be happy, but then they don't have the money to go off and do the things that they desire. So do the things that you desire, but do it on a, on a uh, lower budget or quicker budget or, or a more uh, easier budget for you and your lifestyle. So again, if, it's, if you like concerts, you like music, you know, there's tons of music concerts. WYEP just had one this past summer that was totally free. It was like hours at Shinley Park. So look for things that you can go to that are affordable. If you like dancing, but you don't have the money to go to a nice fancy bar, there's different dance clubs that have various dancing things that are, you know, $5 a mission. So a little bit better. Uh, there might be even others that are even free. So uh, my big thing is Think of the things that you're missing out on. Think, think of the things that you want to do more of. Uh, and think of, you know, what are the things I would need to do to make myself have a better life and to be happier. And then to look for ways that you can do that in an affordable way. Uh, for me, I like to go out to dinner every Friday night. To me, that's just a great way to end the weekend, whether if it's myself or if it's also my kids and my family. It's, it's my favorite thing. And it, it, it's constantly always changing. It's something always different. So I really enjoy doing that. And when I do, so I'll go to various restaurants, but depending on my wallet at the time, I might go to a fancier one. I might go to a less fancier one. It all kind of depends. And uh, so I grant myself that because to me that brings me happiness, trying new things. Uh, I love restaurants that have uh, a theme and and do a good job with their theme and decor. So I love going to different restaurants with different decors and themes. So try that. Uh, and then, you know, if, if you're saying, well, I don't have the money to do that all the time, you know, whether if it's just getting appetizers at those places. So it's still, it's getting what you want to do that would bring you happiness but then also doing it on a, on a limited budget. What's great is that we live in the city of Pittsburgh. There are so many opportunities. There's so many uh, things that are available in our fingertips to be able to uh, get to experience affordably. So if you say, I don't have the money to do stuff, I'm really unhappy and I don't have the money to do stuff, well, start looking at things that you can do that are free or almost free and try to do your best on catching that excuse of, I don't have the money. Well, I, I do have the money. I'll just, or I still don't have the money, but I'm gonna go and choose to do the things uh, that I like an affordable way and in, the, and in an affordable manner. So I hope that that helps uh, N and um, just really get into feeling those feelings often and um, doing the things that you want to do. And if you're at a tight budget, do them on, you know, do it on a, on a lower income or lower price level. You can still have great fun with free events. It's true. Welcome back. And uh, in this segment, again, this is normally where I would have guests, but today your guest is me. 
uh, your host. I wanted to really talk about uh, who I am and to, just for you to get to know me, as I said earlier. So uh, you might be wondering where is Kitsy from? Uh, I, again, I do live in Pittsburgh now, but I am from a small little town of Tawanda, Pennsylvania, which is five hours northeast of here. Uh, I came here because I went to college at IUP, got an intern in the internship in the city, and then stayed here because I knew the roads and I thought it was pretty, <laughs> uh, which I think a lot of people stay here for that reason. They know the roads and they just say, oh, I know how to get around, I'm fine. And uh, so that's what originally brought me was that internship and I, um, originally I, I went to IUP, I had a communications degree, so this fits right into my degree. I also have a master's in business through, at Waynesburg. And I, I when was it? Uh, okay, it was, my golly, about 20 years ago, I got into this stuff, or I started learning about it. I was uh, doing a half marathon, I know, how crazy, with my 75-year-old grandmother at the time. I was 25, she was 75, and we, uh, I realized I was really working my body really hard, and I needed relaxation to relax that body that was doing so great on getting it up to 13 miles and 13.1 uh, miles. So I started going to a massage therapist and she would keep saying, okay, I'm gonna go, uh, at the end of the Reiki, uh, at the end of the massage session, she'd say, I'm gonna go and turn on my Reiki. And I was like, what is that? And she told me it's a technique for relaxation and stress reduction. I had no clue, I don't know what she was talking about. I was like, she sounds like she's talking a different language. Uh, but that ultimately was what brought me into where I am now. And I, uh, Reiki is a technique, again, for relaxation, stress reduction. You can learn more um, online if you wanna you know, look up what is Reiki. Um, there is a website uh, called reiki.org. So if you wanna visit that, that has information, has a lot of tidbits of great uh, information about what it is and, and what's involved. So that's really what got me started in this work, and I have really enjoyed it ever since. Originally, I wanted a local business where I met in person with people, and I did that for those six years. It really brought me joy. I saw the benefit Reiki did for me in my life, so I wanted to do it for other people. I realized my anger calmed down, I realized my emotions were just kind of more manageable. I realized that I was just learning just a whole new belief system. So it really brought me joy. And I did that for many years until, again, I chose to kind of switch my business to an online feature, online business, where it's more of uh, videos that people can watch at any time. And so I do turn on my Reiki before this. My intention was that uh, if you're receiving, uh, if you're sitting down, relaxing, that you get it at that time. And then if uh, you're driving or, or doing other things, that you'll get it at night. So that's my intention also. So if you're saying, oh, this feels great talking to her, or I feel nice and peaceful, that might be the Reiki that I turned on beforehand. So that's kind of a little help. So to me, I feel that I don't have to be in person with people. I feel that I don't have to work one-on-one -on -one with people to help them and that they can receive help just by watching this video with the things that I say, and then also possibly with the feelings um, or the Reiki that I give while I'm doing these things. So Reiki was a huge part of it. Um, while I started that Reiki business, uh, what happened? Oh, I took a course in introduction to, to psychics or the psychic ability. Uh, and I have to say, I didn't do very good in it. <laughs> so if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not good at intuition and I want to do more and I want to I want to have the gifts of, of psychic stuff, uh, trust me, 
every person has been where you're at, or most people have been where you're at, 99%. So do your best to give yourself, uh, you know, just a little bit of, of comfort of, hey, you know, other people have also been where I'm at, and if I keep going, I'll keep getting better. So uh, do your best to not let that stop you of uh, going after, you know, having that ability and having the intuition. To me, I don't feel that you have to be born with those gifts. I feel that you can really have those gifts and have intuition and have psychic, and it's a constant work in progress, and it's something that you can gain and grow over the years. Uh, some are born with it, and I think that's amazing, but I don't think everyone's born with it. So um, if you aren't born with those gifts, but you do want to have them, look into classes, look into Reiki, look into mediumship courses, and look into expanding your intuition, and that's possible, that's so possible in this day and age. Uh, so it's really important that if that's of interest to you to do that. I've also seen where for decades, uh, you know, kind of the 60 and older group were really into this stuff. They kind of hid it for decades and you know, always wanted to kind of tap into this abilities, tap into these gifts. And then uh, they just kind of, you know, kept it away. And then at some point, 60, they just kind of were like, I'm done. <laughs> I am letting my colors fly of my intuition and psychic gifts. And so if that's the case, you know, it's, it's never too late to pivot and to really look into something that you have really desired to. Uh, I, again, I think for many decades, this stuff was hidden, not talked about, or considered bad things where I think it's just a different belief. And if people don't believe in them, then that's fine. But if you do, if you like this stuff, then keep looking into these things, <clears throat> whether if it's this, uh, this series, this TV show, or if it's just other TV shows uh, or other YouTube channels or whatnot, uh, start looking into this stuff. If these uh, interests of metaphysical, spiritual, alternative wellness topics interest you, you know, grant yourself that gift of, of searching and finding that within yourself and outside of yourself to be able to, to really do that. And I think that's really why I'm here where I am today is because I really desired this stuff. I desired uh, learning more and I really just trusted that. And I really trusted uh, my thoughts and myself of, you know, as much as this might have a, a bad name for it, I, I want to learn more. I want to see, is it really that bad? I, you know, there's, again, a lot of just negative thoughts about things that are outside the norm, close to the norm, but still outside of it. Uh, I've worked in this industry and in the Pittsburgh spiritual community now for almost 15 years now. Uh, and, you know, it's amazing to see these owners and these business people and these um, <clears throat> mediums that are just truly just are all about helping humanity, helping the person in front of them and helping uh, shift the world to a place that is more accepting. And good news, I'm seeing that the world is more accepting, but I think there's still things that could be brought up to help the world even be better and allow um, a segment, which is the segment of spiritual metaphysical, to also be brought up so that it's also viewed as, it just is another belief that not everyone agrees with, but a lot of people do believe in, and that's fine. You know, <laughs> five years ago, 10 years ago, vision boards, you never heard. Uh, manifesting, you never heard, what else? Uh, there's just other words that were just never talked about. Luckily, things are changing. More people are stepping into uh, the alternative wellness, the, the spiritual metaphysical topics, but it has, it has been work on the people that, that joined this movement 10 years ago, five years ago, that's saying, hey, you know, I wanna bring this to light so that, that really 
it, it's an okay chapter rather than it being uh, viewed as what it what it was 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So uh, the other thing too, I did forget, and I just got the image, was that I was into, I did do cards. I didn't do tarot cards, but I did do cards. How old? I think my senior year of high school, some during college I did, I did cards. Uh, I was friends with a girl uh, back in my hometown. She's also, she's an attorney that's out of Florida, but she also became a medium too recently or started to be more into that stuff. So I think it's interesting that the person that gave me those cards and those things actually started getting more into it. But the, so I had the cards and it had specific numbers, had specific, uh, kind of like a, it, it was playing cards, but it had, a, you know, if uh, the Jack was a younger male, King was an older male, uh, work, f flying, travel. It was, it was kind of those specific words on each of those cards. So it wasn't tarot cards, but it was, it was kind of like a card set or deck of cards. She told me that that her mom was best. Her mom lived in California, and she was good friends with one of the most renowned psychics in America. And these were the cards that she used for readings. And so she gave the same, you know, the answers of each of those cards and the name titles, and gave them to her mom, which in turn gave it to her daughter, which in turn gave it to me. And. So I did them and I, oh, I was amazing. Like I did some readings that were really powerful. I did, uh, I primarily did them on myself. There was a few that I did with other people. So it was just regular shuffling cards uh, and I shuffled them, did a few readings. And I remember doing that back in high school and I worked at a pizza shop and I did those, those readings at the pizza shop, which was, that's what you do sometimes. And, <laughs> and and I did them. They were they were really accurate. And I, I uh, there was a flight in like 1990s, 99, 98, where it brought up the exact number of the people who passed away. And I had it. And I, and I started writing them on an index card to show to show what I was getting, because I was like, I need proof that this is happening, and I need proof of the readings and the info that I was getting. So I did that, and literally I wrote it down, and then a few days later it would come true. And I would do that, and it was just remarkable. Uh, there was a boy that passed away in my, my high school class, and unfortunately really sad. And I also predicted that. And once I went back to those readings, the days prior to, weeks prior to readings, it showed that car, young man, death. Um, and then I, it showed like a date or something like that. So it was very, there was a few different things. It also predicted my grandfather's death also. Um, and what's a shame of, all of this was that I told someone what I was doing. I told someone that I was doing cards, reading the information, and they told me that that was bad and that it was the work of the devil and that I should stop. Obviously, this person was extremely religious. I'm now remembering who that person was. Um, and, uh, and so I took that information. I took what they said, that it was the work of the devil, and I stopped. And I felt shame. I felt uh, like I did something wrong and that I felt like I should totally stop because that person was right. And what really frustrates me is that to me, I feel there is so much more to life than what we know of. Uh, you know, scientist things, there's a brain, there's this, there's that. There's so many things to life that we don't know about. and. Do I feel that doing uh, uh, playing cards with words is the work of the devil? Heck no. Well, um, it, the, it, you could be doing so many more worse things in life. <laughs> um, 
what I do know is that, and what I believe is that there is an energy that is something that we've yet totally learned about. Um, as they say, there's so much more to life than this. And that, what is it? That there's just a lot of things that we don't know about life yet. And I'm hoping in the next few decades, the next hundred years, it does get talked about, it does get described, so that people that are predictive, people that are uh, doing these type of readings are just not the work of the devil, but are people that people are saying, oh, this is, this, they're just tapping into energy that we all have the ability to tap into predictive energy. Uh, there was that, uh, what was it? What was that one concert in Las Vegas that there was that shooting and it killed like, I forget. What was it, 500 people, 2,000? I forget. It was right after that hurricane. Um, it was at Las Vegas, I think of the country star, I forget his name. But he, the day before that, two, no, it was the week before that happened, I started hearing a number and I wrote it out. It was a very specific number. It just kept showing up, showing up, showing up. I kept hearing it. And I kept telling my husband at the time, I was like, you know, I don't know what this number is, and I don't know why I keep being told it. And then next thing you know, they uh, it happened, and like a week later, they said the number of people that died was this, and I think my number was off by like one. It was off by one. So I was like, wow. Like to me, you know, there wasn't anything that I really, I, I don't think that number that I received was bad, and I don't think that uh, being open to the things that are happening in the future or, or now or whatever is bad. It is just another gift that we that we have as humanity. We all have gifts of humanity. Uh, at the beginning of my local business, I would have people saying, "I have this experience. I'm having this experience of." of seeing something happen and that is predictive or you know uh, psychically happening before it's happening and i would tell people just trust those gifts i know it's not talked about i know it's not really discussed a lot about in today's society but just accept it for what it is keep working with it keep appreciating what you're receiving and keep appreciating uh, what it is that's being given to you and just trusting that it is not the work of the devil and that it is totally fine and it is just a way how your gifts are showing up at this moment. So really trust your gifts, trust what you're receiving. Uh, if it's nice, beautiful, kind, uh, or something where you're getting to see people happen ahead of time, then know that these are all just beautiful gifts, that it is okay, there is nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong foundationally with you because of those things, and to keep working on those things, keep just loving on yourself so that those gifts can grow, that those gifts can expand, and to me, ultimately, I feel that the more we can accept ourselves, the more we can accept our beliefs, the more we can accept our, our gifts, the more we like ourselves, the more things come and the more joy comes. So again, talking about the last segment of how can I be happy? Well, it could be also that there might be beliefs and gifts or other, other things that might be nudging you on your back and nudging you on your shoulder that you're just like, oh, I'm not going to do that because that's bad or, or that's wrong. And, and as long as it's not hurting people, as long as we're not, you know, literally, you know, as long as we're not hurting people physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, then if it's a topic or a belief that you want to look into because that might bring you happiness, then let that, that, 
naysayer in your brain or naysayer in your life to be able to go out and to do those things that you have been interested in or wanted to look into more. Um, I feel bummed that that woman at that job told me that it was a work of the devil. I think a lot of the people that are now in the metaphysical community also had someone judge them on their doings, on their beliefs, on their things. And unfortunately, um, to me, I believe that it's so important to validate uh, just your desires and to validate, again, the beliefs that you want to try. So it's, uh, I'm, I felt really unvalidated when that lady told me that, oh, what you're picking up is the work of the devil. It, instead of her saying, I'm so proud that you uh, are doing something that is showing you that there is more to life than this, that that's really beautiful that that happened. And unfortunately, it didn't go that way. And unfortunately, <clears throat> and to think how farther along I would have been if I would have kept going, if I would have kept researching, uh, I, I missed, you know, 10, 12 years of my life of these things that bring me pure happiness and pure joy because of what that lady said. So if someone has said that in the past to you, maybe now is the time to really get back into uh, those things that people may have judged you about. That doesn't hurt a soul and that you enjoy actually doing. But because one person told you, or two people or three people told you not to do it, that you stop doing it altogether. So um, I think it's really important that we do the things that bring us happiness as long as we're not hurting other people. So, uh, so that really doing those cards, uh, doing finding out that number of uh, the people who passed away that day and that concert it really kind of makes you think of, you know, what is it that we've yet to tap into? What is it that we have yet to learn about in society? Um, I have, there's a course on, on my website that is, uh, it's a third eye psychic surgery. It's the, the one I kind of recommend people to, to do most. And it's a course that I did, a workshop that I recorded my golly, six years ago. And what's amazing, my, my only intention for that was that people would receive uh, the things they're meant to receive on that at the time that they are watching it. So even though if I'm not there with them at that, you know, at that specific place, at that specific time, they are still receiving that uh, modality or that service wherever they are even if it's 10 years after I recorded it. And what's amazing, and again, my only intention for that was to, to have them get it and to have it as though I was there with them and, it, and they would receive it whenever they're getting those videos and at that time. So my big thing really ultimately is just to really trust what uh, the gifts that you have, whether if that is um, the things that we talked about as I said earlier, that I'll never forget the time when I came to one of, uh, it was a place where when I saw them, they were saying how that, that they had dreams that was predictive. And sometimes they would tell people and it wouldn't eventually happen. And I told them, I said, you just really got to trust those feelings and you really got to trust those those dreams so that you can stop those from happening. If you can't, then that's fine. If you can't stop it, but just really trust those dreams and really trust what you're getting. So, and that's my, my best advice to you is to do that, is to trust those gifts that you have. If, if you have that predictive, uh, or if you, if you see dead people, or if you, um, whatever those unique gifts and abilities are to really just trust it and to really just get into it. Um, my YouTube channel has videos that kind of talk about working with these gifts a little bit. 
So if you want to know more about that, but so that's really one of the biggest things and biggest takeaways. Second is, as I was talking about my course, the, th the third eye psychic surgery, <clears throat> literally people are getting these experiences years after I taught it. So yeah, I did set that intention, but how did that, how does that work? And how is it that you set an intention and there's an energetic workshop that you watch at, a, at any time you watch it and you're getting these unique, beautiful, amazing experiences? Again, that just goes back to there's so much more to life than this. And there is, I think, definitely places in life that science still has a missing parts on uh, that... Uh, you know, that predictive things that could really look into and figure out of what is it that we're tapping into. Uh, you know, there is that whole belief of that we are all connected. We are, there's all, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about today too, was that to me, I'm a spiritualist, which believes that life continues after death and that you can communicate with them. Um, spiritualist is a religion, which is, uh, you can believe in the religion if you say, I don't believe in the religion, but I believe in the belief, but or I believe in the science of it, you could do that. So you could still be spiritualist in the fact if you believe in the, the belief of it, but not the religion. Um, and then also, I'm also a Gnostic, which is the belief that there's a peace of God within all of us. And it's that peace of God within all of us that where we can really ultimately, you know, create the life that we want. And so when we have those unique experiences of having that number show up in that concert in Las Vegas, is that really unique or is it just I'm, somehow I tapped into that energy that's within me, that's within all of us, and <clears throat> it is uh, really, uh, you know, it's a thing that all of us can do because we're all connected. So... I, I do definitely recommend to look into the spiritualists if you are um, interested in the communication of mediumship and things. And then also look into Gnostic if you say, you know, that does make sense. I do feel that we all do have a piece of God. If we were all created by him, then ultimately we all have pieces. So look into that. Um, I think it's G N O S. Gnostic, T-I-C. So I just really recommend to really, you know, open your mind to learning new things, uh, learning new beliefs, and then again, trusting yourself and trusting those beautiful gifts that you have. And uh, let's create the life that we want to create. So I look forward to connecting with you guys. Again, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing and hearing how you connected with this. And until next time, have a great day. Many blessings.